Fantastic. Here we go. It is Saturday, and uh, I want to wish, welcome you guys to another Saturday Zoom networking. Our guest speaker today is um, just an all around great guy. I love this guy. Um, he's at a Pace Warmy Sub 2 community, and yes, we have the Sub 2 community on the, all the time because they're the number one educational platform in the country right now. The um, and Pace Warmy, as you guys know, is the premier genius for creative finance in the country, which means the world for real estate investment. We're we're blessed to have uh, Pace as our mentor and Sub2 as a community that we can uh, engage with and participate with. Our guest speaker today is one of the rising rock stars in Sub2, highly respected within the community. Um, started as a student, became an investor, entrepreneur, is now a successful investor, uh, successful businessman, family man, father, husband, uh, world-class snow skier, downhill, slow guy, <laughs> Uh, my good friend, Mr. Chai Hansalkar. Chai, how are you? Hey, good. Th thank you so much for having me, JJ. I'm trying to find you on Instagram to post this story. Yeah, no, there you go. I just found you. I'm gonna. Great, great. Yeah, it's it's. I'm there's JJ Zizian. Uh, JJ Dot is Zizian on Instagram for anyone. To yes. Me. Yeah, you, I tagged you already. Thank you so much, my yes, friend. Sir. Hey, you know, um. For those that don't know you, where in the country are you, are you based? Where are you located? What, what, East Coast, West Coast? So, uh, so my name is Chai Fansalkar, uh, and I'm based out of Houston, Texas. And I do business all over Texas, all major metros and uh, the major suburbs of all the major metros. Uh, that's where we do business. We buy cash deals, creative deals, apartments small, big. I mean, we, we are just into buying portfolio all over Texas creatively or at discounted purchases. Wow. Wow. Um, how long have you been acquiring properties? Is it something relatively new? You've been doing it a number of years. Uh, so I acquired my first property uh, in 2015 in, in America. So before that, I, I bought some properties in my home country where I come from in India. Uh, it was a completely different mindset, the way you invest overseas compared to how you do in America. And I love to tell that story to everyone, why America is such a great country and what opportunities you have available here. I completely scrapped my strategy of purchasing real estate overseas and started buying in America in 2015. And then I just kept adding new strategies to my uh, my toolkit and just kept adding stuff. Uh, and and now we buy majority of our stuff creatively. Wow, that's you are a rock star. Um, I know when I got into step two, I I, I heard about your, your I heard of your name, and it wasn't it wasn't until I got to um, the mastermind in January that you were there with your oh, that's when we met. gosh and i heard about the handsome boys we'll talk about the handsome boys <laughs> in a minute but um you know let's get back to how you got going you know we all start in real estate a different way as we get into the business world as adults what leads into that is what we're doing to maybe our teens or 20s when we're 16 we're driving when we're 18 we're voting when we're 21 we can go buy an alcoholic beverage at a restaurant or a liquor store whatever it happens to be um through these years of transition in your life when you, you know, getting into adulthood. Um, and I know you said you, you first purchased something in, in, in your home country when you were in your teens, going into your twenties, was real estate even on the landscape for you? Was mom in that industry? Was your dad in that industry? And if not, uh, not what, were you, what were you doing in your teens? Maybe that some of us might've been doing, were you just going to school or. So I come from a very, very like modest background. Uh, I, I did have this entrepreneurial bug in me that kept me going all this while until I found a real estate. But before that, I did try a lot of different things. Uh, and when I, come, when I say I come from modest background, I mean, I, I mean it. It's, when I came to America for the first time, my family probably put everything they had on the line just to send me to America. 
and i'm very grateful for that and i'll never forget that but at the same time none of my family members ever had a business or ever was an entrepreneur before myself and it was very hard for me to explain to them why i want to be an entrepreneur even i didn't know myself why i wanted to be one and i had a very different concept of being an entrepreneur back then but in my teens i i attended a few seminars back in india uh, that kind of lit that fire in me uh, and kept me going and i fought with my parents all my life before because my mom wanted me to follow a straight line path like go to school i was decent in school i, I did well as an engineer i did and i uh, i got a decent job and that's what she wanted me to have and once i save up enough to take care of my family then give it a shot in uh and try business that's what my mom <laughs> get, i mean mm-hmm. thought i should be doing uh and i pretty much followed that plan but for different reasons if i stayed back home i would have gotten into business lot sooner but before i came to america uh, b- because i came to america i was on a visa and i was uh trying i mean i was completing my education here uh, i did my masters in engineering here and in order for me to stay in this country i have to have a job that gives me a visa which gives me a legal status to live in this country uh so that's basically your w and, yeah that was my w2 so i got my first job in 2009 uh, uh at immersion process management it's a pretty big company as an engineer and i was basically doing exactly what i learned in school but at, at on the side i was still looking for different things to do and i i had met prakash probably around 2010 11 time frame and uh someone approached us with a business opportunity uh it was completely it was not real estate at all and uh, they it was a it servicing company they wanted us to open an american entity for them and run it here so i mean it ran into some legal issues down the road but we started that business on the side while having our w2 i mean i didn't quit my w2 until 2021 uh i had my w2 all along okay and when you first asked me hey what what do you what do you think you should talk about and i know a lot of people have talked about like mindset uh how business i mean systems and processes and um like different strategies in real estate so i just thought like someone coming from another country to america who has to maintain their w2 in order to live in america and still have this entrepreneurial bug and uh this i mean goal of becoming an entrepreneur cannot wait until i get my full status so i had to do these things in parallel i had no other choice but what that led me to do is that help me build systems or when i say systems it's not a system to run my business it's a i would say more of a structure to my personal life how i run my business while having w2 so that was very like unique in in that sense that's why i thought that would be a great topic to talk about today so when i started this company i i was literally like doing like work at, in my lunch breaks or after work uh, at home but one of the things i quickly realized is i need to have this honest conversation with my wife because she is going to suffer a lot while i try to pursue my passion i mean i was i had a good job it was paying well my wife had a good job and we had a good income coming in i didn't really have to do this business on the side but i mean if i didn't start that i wouldn't be here now, let, let, let me let me ask mean, you something when you came to do your upper education and get your masters were you already married or did you get married after you got here no so i actually met my wife here in the in uh in this i mean i went to u of h university of houston and met her here she is also from india we we'll, i mean our families live probably like 15 minutes apart <laughs> but uh, we met we happened to meet here we knew of each other it was more of an um, 
I mean, we, I knew her as someone's friend and she just happened to come to the same university uh, for education with me. So we just uh, met here and we started dating maybe around 2009. We got married in 2000, yeah, uh, 2011. Now, when you got here, and you're going through your for your master's, you already bought property in India. You kind of knew right away as you're moving forward with your education that you wanted to get into real estate. Is that correct? Not, I wouldn't, I won't say real estate. I knew I wanted to get into a business. So the steps for any international student in America is that you go to school, you're not allowed to have a job while you're in school. So when you get out of school, you get a certain time on your visa to find a job. And then when you get that job, the employer is supposed to give you another legal employment status. So I went through that full path and when I got a job, when me and my, uh, my current wife, we both got a job, we were dating at the time. And as soon as we got a job, our parents were basically like, Hey, I mean, now you guys pretty much settled down. You should get married. Like if you should consider getting married. So we got married pretty, uh, soon. So in 2011, I first invested in India because we had a decent paycheck, uh, what started in 2011. So I took all that money, sent back home and invested in real estate there. So that real estate cost me, uh, in today's money, it cost me like $150,000. It it's a condo in a high rise building. That's, I mean, in India, real estate is, uh, I mean, the land is very expensive because the population is so large. So you don't get houses. So you get condominiums or we call it flats. Mm -hmm. So I bought a flat that was worth about $150,000 and that rented for $250 the rented for not cash flowing. <laughs> the net rent on that before expenses was $250. So that's the kind of real estate we do in India, but we put up with that because the inflation is so high. The property values go up like, crazy. I mean, that doubled in uh, value over and it's pretty much guaranteed with the way inflation is going. Uh, so fast forward to 2014. So in between I had tried b different businesses that didn't work out. So 2014, I was like, I mean, I had heard about real estate from some people. Someone told me, hey, I mean, if you buy this uh, house, I mean, in, a, in Houston, we have a, a small suburb called Pearland. And Pearland was a up and coming suburb at the time. And someone told me, house can be bought for $200,000. $200,000 house will rent for about sixteen fifty dollars at that time, like roughly. And I, I ran my numbers and my payment for that house was gonna be 1700. And I was so thrilled about that idea that I only have to put $50 out of pocket to maintain that house. Basically $50 a month is the cost for me to own a real estate. So that thought was so like that. I was thrilled about the fact that, I mean, now I don't have to live with $250 rent, which I was getting in India versus like now I'm getting 1650 in rent. Uh, and then I was looking to buy one and uh, one thing led to another. I was at this family event and uh, one of my family friends, uh, she was a pretty big deal in real estate at, at the time. They bought a lot of apartment complexes and whatnot. So I was telling her my great idea of buying this 200,000 house on MLS, like without any discount and then renting it. She's like, no, 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 you got to stop right there, go to this, uh, there was, there was, a, there is another, uh, networking group in Houston called lifestyle unlimited. She told me to go to lifestyle and first learn American real estate. That's what she told me. She, so I put my plans on hold, went and attended their seminar, like it was, uh, 500 bucks to attend like two, three day seminar. And, where, and that, that's where they showed us how you buy properties from a wholesaler at a discounted price. And I was blown away. Like you can buy properties for 70 to 80% of the market value 
that's even possible i mean that's not even possible in india like that because uh, everybody knows everybody so it's hard to like sell properties at a discount and when that happens it only goes to the few like chosen ones basically in the market so that was the moment of like growth like where i felt like okay this is going to be my business for the uh, for the future that's when i knew real estate is what i want to do because it you can buy real estate upfront at a 30% discount and sell tomorrow if you wanted to on the market if it's fixed up or if it needs work you can fix it so when i learned that game i was like okay this is it i'm going to do real estate for the rest of my life so that was the trigger if you say but i was still have i mean i was still working full time i was still uh doing what i needed to do to keep maintain my status in america at my work while doing all these things so the time was very limited in that sense okay so i needed to always make sure i complete all my tasks in my w2 and then use like nights and weekends to build my business and at that time it was not a whole selling business or it was not a uh it was not an active business yeah. at least i didn't think of it as an active business so in the beginning for you it was more buy and hold was that what it was yeah so that's what that was the goal that was just a wealth building mechanism yeah so when i saw or learned about buying real estate using uh basically they were teaching you burr method okay yeah so i don't know all, all your listeners know what burr method is but it's basically buy rehab refinance rent and repeat so if you if you buy it right at a discounted price usually the property is going to come with some work to be done okay you have to do some work because then mm-hmm. you are buying a discounted property because someone is in distress and they cannot finish yeah. the job or they yeah the property they cannot do anything trash. to the house they just yeah. want to so when i learned that that I, i decided to do that and start buying from wholesalers so i started building my network like you always preach i i listen to a lot of your content like build your network and that's exactly what i started doing and that's what helped me maintain my w2 because as you focus on building network more and more you find people you can rely on you build these long lasting relationships with wholesalers with rehabbers i mean contractors with uh, property managers with uh, handyman like you need to build your network not just with other investors but with also with the people who are going to make mm-hmm. you successful all all the different so, so i leveraged a lot of uh, support from lifestyles unlimited that was the group i was part of i used uh, pretty much their all their lenders all their contractors all their realtors uh, everybody to do and i probably bought like 10 houses in uh, in maybe less than a year and i was pretty excited about that and every one of those has at least doubled in price since when i purchased it in 2015 16 time frame and I, i had already purchased them low but and feel i mean feel free to interrupt me if you have a question okay i'm just yeah gonna... yeah, let, yeah let, me, let me let me ask you some here so as you're getting into real estate and you're learning obviously we know this is something we can't do by ourselves somewhere along yep. the way like when i met you in phoenix pace had introduced you as part of the handsome boys and so yeah. <laughs> uh we can't do this by ourselves but you've got a business partner to some extent do you not yeah So so uh, us, Prakash is my business partner. Yeah. So tell us how you met Prakash and you guys were kind of working together before you came to Seb2, right? Yeah, so we we've been part of multiple mentorships before that. But when I first started, I was doing my own thing. I was I had joined Lifestyles and I was learning to buy properties at a discounted like value and fix them and uh rent them all these things and prakash had followed more of a retail route he was uh, he and him and i we had a business before we, i mean when we had to shut down that it servicing business mm-hmm. and we we had just come out of that um mess 
and we were both following real estate in our own way so he took uh, he took up a uh, i'm sorry he he got a real estate license a realtor license and he was following more of a retail route and even he wanted to build his own portfolio so he was doing more of a mls scraping to find leads and uh, flip them or uh, rent them how did things like how that. did you guys how did you guys decide to come together was there a, a mutual decision did he pursue you did you pursue no so uh, what ended up happening is so from 2015 through 2018 i was doing my own thing he was doing his own thing and uh, one day we just got to talking hey i mean i think there is something here so before i got to the point where prakash and i started a business together i was i mean i i was trying different things to find more discounted properties and i had just learned about wholesaling and i asked like i i thought it was a lot of work and you need to have you cannot have a full time job while having full time business but then this guy came up uh, to me and one of our, one of the agents at this networking com- uh, uh networking group uh, lifestyle his name is moon moon kim and i always i'm super grateful to that guy he's like no you just have to go to this website download a bunch of addresses then take those addresses go to this website upload it and they will send the letters for you i was like oh that's it that's all that is he's like yeah so i sent 300 letters literally 300 letters and i got one like i got maybe seven or eight phone calls and i got one house from that i bought one house that ended up making me like 90 grand 3 years later because i wow. held on to it and i i knew how much equity i captured and i was like wow this is unbelievable like if i can make almost like almost half of my salary in like one property that's crazy i mean at that time my salary was probably closer to 100 grand and i thought i was going to make 50 but i ended up making 90 because the market went up later but 50 was still a big number and i was like i have to do this more how can i do this more and then i i, I built in a courage to send 500 letters then i got another property i was like this is like easy <laughs> i mean my job is so much more difficult so i started doing this on the side and one day i wanted to see if we can and the only person in my circle was prakash who was doing something in the real estate, real estate world so i went up to him i told him hey i know you are doing lot of mls stuff i got something much better than that i think we need to do this on a bigger scale so i showed him what i did and we decided to do a mailer campaign so that was the start of our business in 2018 probably march time frame and we sent out 4000 mailers and we got like two phone calls and we were i was like no i i i mean i just bought these two houses with like 300 and 500 letters what the hell happened here so but then we quickly realized that the mark uh, the mailer strategy was extremely saturated at that time and people were getting a lot of mailers for houses and that was not the right strategy so we we started switching gears from there on and uh, we went to cold calling and then uh, we did well in cold calling but yeah 2018 march is when we first started our business together cool as a wholesaling company So um you and I have met through Sub2 and uh Pace Morby Sub2 community so you you had you know getting your master's degree you then you know started looking had some interest in real estate you pursued that a bit you got with your partner Prakash how did did you two come to Sub2 together did he introduce you to Pace did did you introduce him how did you guys come into the Sub2 community oh uh 2018 when the mailer campaign failed we were looking into cold calling and we hired this guy off of upwork randomly without having any background on how to hire people etc and he like we gave him a list and he made first phone call i'm not talking about first lead or first appointment i'm talking about first phone call this guy makes and that hit it out of the park for us like we made 35 grand assignment and i was like okay this is what we need to be doing so at that time brent daniels was doing i mean teaching cold calling uh, in his ttp program 
So we joined that. And I think that's how we found Pace from there. And uh, Pace was a rising rock star at that point. He was buying his own sub tools and doing a bunch of interviews and podcasts with a lot of people. And he had started this free group on Facebook just to talk about 380 Finance, the one where we have like hundreds of thousands of members now. Uh, that was a very small group back then. And he was, uh, he had went around the country uh, and built a great network and added all the experts in that group before he opened it to public. So every time you post on that group, you would get an answer because all these experts around the country were answering your questions. So I thought that was a very like brilliant idea. Like, because Facebook groups was fairly new and people had not figured out how to manage a Facebook group properly. And Pace was one of the first ones who did that. So I was very impressed with the guy. And I was following him very like uh, regularly at that time. And then he, and I showed Prakash and Prakash was following him too. And then Prakash found out from Brent or someone that, oh, he's starting a mentorship, paid mentorship, uh, sub two. And at that time, we were just joining membership every year. 2018, we joined TTP. 2019, we joined uh, Todd Toback. Do you know him, Todd? No. So Todd Toback is another guy who was... Uh, so Wholesaling Inc. at the time was owned by Tom Kroll, and he had all these rising rock stars uh, coming into Wholesaling Inc. and run their own mentorships, like a incubator. So... Uh, Todd Toback was one of the guys we joined his mentorship. And then 2020, we joined Sub2. Uh, but we didn't really think of Sub2 or any other mentorship as uh, anything more than a networking group. We just wanted to join a uh, new thing because we just wanted to keep ourselves up, ourselves up to date with the knowledge. But we didn't know what Sub2 is going to do to our lives. Uh, I mean three, four years later, uh, that was a big surprise. And we didn't even engage ourselves in sub two that much, like in the first year and a half, two years. And people were doing all kinds of things. And we already, I mean, we have a pretty big network of wholesalers and um, other students from other mentorship where we were getting deals from. So we didn't like, we just learned about sub two and we were like, okay, sure. Go to meetups here and there and uh, introduce ourselves as buyers. And that's about it. So we didn't really participate in anything until I meet, met you at that event, uh, the Golden Ticket event. Were you at the Golden Ticket event or the Mastermind? I was in the Mastermind in January of this year. Oh, okay, so Golden Ticket, I think, happened in November of last year, right? Just before, yeah. So that's when, uh, before Golden Ticket, we had, um, I had met like Noah, Noah and Muni. So they were partnering up on a few things. Um, and Noah and Munif were visiting Houston for uh, some uh, Airbnb they had purchased. And I, oh, actually, my team did the full rehab for their Airbnb. It was a small rehab. And just for uh, building relationships, we did that at our cost. But that's how we met these guys. And when they came to Houston, we built a good relationship. In fact, Noah stayed at my house for a few days. And then him and I went to they uh, see their Pensacola project. Um, and I mean, they are still raising money for that project. Pretty cool project. So we did, we spent a lot of time and that's when I learned about what people are doing in sub two. And I was like, holy cow, like, why did I not <laughs> get myself involved in all these things? Uh, and we were at that point taking one call at a time from a bunch of students who used to connect with us. And then, teach one student at a time on how to underwrite properties, what to bring us, because we were the buyer. And every time someone brings us a deal, sometimes people would just call us and then give us an address. And I'm like, I have, I know all the addresses in Houston. I need more than an address to make a deal with you, right? So it was a very slow uh, path of, uh, I mean, slow path uh, to grow network, okay? So by the time we uh, met Pace at the, I mean, we had met Pace a bunch of times. He had uh, visited Houston a bunch of times and he was pretty accessible guy at that time. Uh, but we never really approached him to offer anything. 
it was always like Q and A type discussion. So in golden ticket event, I went up to Pace and I asked him, "Hey, look, I mean, we are, we want to help a lot of your students, but we are doing one at a time on one phone call at a time. So is there a chance for us to have a dedicated slot on your calendar so that we can do this more publicly or more? Uh, I mean." Hundreds of students can attend at the same time. Yeah, that makes sense. And he, he, so, and as soon as like within two days, he's like, "Hey, Saturday spot opened up. Are you guys interested?" I was like, "Of course, Perfect. let's do Perfect. it." So since then, we pretty much uh, like a lot of people know us now. Like we were, and lot of credit goes to Muni for this. Okay, so Noah and Muni showed us what's possible. Uh, in within Sapu, and Munif had found a lot of success, and mm. uh, even Noah had found a lot of success because Pace was pushing them. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yes, and just for clarification, for those that don't know, we're talking about Munif Saza, and we're talking about Noah Hoffman, and these are two very like like uh, Prakash and um, <clears throat> Chai. These two guys are also very, very visible, very, very successful in the community. And 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 when you guys start networking, you will see that you will meet the other faces. And as Chai and yeah. Prakash had met Noah and Munif, and then you know, so through building those relationships, that opened up opportunity for you. Oh yeah, oh big time. So we were already so as we went from the mailers to cold calling, we we engaged ourselves in the TTP community. It was not as big what Sub2 is today, uh, but and it was also a paid like mentorship. Like you had to pay monthly to stay in the group. Like Sub2 is free. Like once you join, you're a lifetime member. You don't have to pay yearly renewal or all these things. Uh, so that's <clears throat> another reason why Sub2 community got a lot bigger, a lot faster. And uh, Pace knows how to keep the energy up in these groups. Uh, so, I mean, Pace is a very smart guy and, uh, and what does what he does because uh, of his skill set. Yeah, P Pace is so, amazing. But we were networking with people and our goal always was to build our network. But we didn't know there is a better way to build it by like doing community service online like just like what you do, you have your own group, you are doing. So uh, what you do helps so many people in so many ways, you don't even know a lot of times. Yeah. And I, I mean, I have done that to all my neighbors, all my friends, anybody who is in touch with me directly in my life, uh, who I call friends or family, everybody has benefited from what I do. But that's such a small circle. Like when I look at it, it's like maybe 50 people, right? Or 100 people at the most. But when you start delivering value using the tools such as Facebook, Instagram, Zoom, within private groups like Sub2 or a TTP or anywhere, you open yourself up to a huge set of yeah. people. And so many people are getting, I mean, I get messages every day from people trying to just schedule a call with me and they offer me like money just to schedule a call. And I'm like, I don't want your money. I get paid in like ways you don't even, you can't even imagine. Yeah. Like, by doing this community service, people up bring us deals. And the best part is like, I'm trying to deliver this value for free. People come to me to like, to seek help with their deal. And when I help them, I always tell them, hey, I'm also a buyer. So yeah. I get first dibs on any deal. There you so, go. They get paid for like they get paid to come to me, get help, and sell me the deal too. So everybody wins. Chai, we're gonna take some questions now, but before we do, I have one question yeah. for you as we move into this thing. When I, when I met you at the mastermind, I was talking to Pace about underwriting deals that I didn't understand how to underwrite deals, and he said, "Well, you know, you don't need to under." I said, "Pace, I need to learn how to underwrite." He says, no, you don't. I said, no, Pace, I do. He says, no, you don't. 
And I didn't understand it. <laughs> he says, no, if you need a deal under it, just take it to the handsome boys. I said, who are the handsome boys? He said, those guys sitting <laughs> over there. And so you you, you and Prakash were sitting even there going, call me, call us. So first, yeah. how, do you remember when Pace first gave you guys the nickname, the handsome boys? So Pace, like, uh, Pace is very good at like giving names to people that stick with you for a long time. So Pace, uh, when I told him, hey, this is what I'm offering. Can I do free underwriting for all, all of your students? And he's like, okay, let me see if I have a slot available. And then next time I come to the mastermind, he's like, I got a slot for you. And uh, I don't know, in the passing comment, he just announced it. Oh, these brown handsome boys are going to start a underwriting Zoom or something. And he's like, is it okay to call you like brown? I'm like, heck yeah. I mean, I am brown. <laughs> so that turned from like brown handsome boys to handsome boys only. The so boys, but, yeah. yeah, I mean, it works. That's so cool. it's a good, I mean, that's also, I mean, like the way we are discussing right now, it's in a, maybe it has a more uh, funny tone to it. Like, but in reality, it works in our favor big time. Because yeah. people remember, like this is a like a catchphrase, right? Yeah, uh, the handsome, the handsome it, boys. It, yeah, like like the Bash Brothers, you know. So you guys, are yeah, Bash, Bro- Bash Bros is also a name Pace uh, gave them. Basically. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie, and Tyler are telling us how how that came about. Graham, you are on with Chai. What's your question? Uh, thank you, Chai, and thank you, JJ, for this amazing call. Um, I've been in this game, real estate now, for 20 years. I, I made probably every mistake um, in the book. And um, I think one of the biggest mistakes I've made is is managing uh, money, you know, when it comes to acquiring real estate, uh, raising the capital, and then deploying the capital and um, scaling the business. So uh, one of the things I'm looking into right now is, was called infinite banking. I wonder whether you've come across that concept, and if you have any thoughts on that. In 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 finance you know, banking, yes, infinite banking. Um, it's, yeah. So I yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's a good thing. Uh, but when you are starting out, infinite banking. So if I understand, and for the the everyone attending. Infinite banking starts with a whole life insurance. Is that right? Yes, that's right. With so cash. you have a whole life insurance policy that eventually um, it, I think, vests after like a four years or something. And then you can basically borrow money from your own policy. You can borrow Correct. money uh, from the insurance company and they have an interest rate Correct. on it. Doesn't, you're not touching your cash value on the, on the policy. Yeah, and it's a whole life right. policy that, that goes until you're 121. I know Pace has mentioned this from time to time, and I'm looking into it as whether this is a really good way of uh, recycling your money and a way of, uh, you know, doing micro lending and um, PML and everything like that. So I personally don't have a whole life policy myself because I never really at the time to wait four years. And I was, I mean, until two years ago, I was still using every, every one of my penny in my business everywhere. So I didn't have the money to just park it in a whole life insurance and then let it, uh, I mean, wait for four years to borrow from it. Uh, But now I'm considering doing that. Yes. You don't have to wait at all. The first month you open up within weeks, you can take money out. Because you're actually loaning money right, so, from the insurance company, you see. Yeah. Correct. So I even, uh, maybe I don't have a full understanding of this either, but as I understand, it's a pretty effective tool to use in your business. And I think Face uses it quite a bit uh, from what I know. And a lot of people do. Uh, I mean, actually looking into it right now, uh, in the last couple of months, I've started looking into it. Uh but yeah, I mean, once you have that money that you have, you can borrow from the insurance company, the returns go back to your policies. That not that right? 
Yes, and they you are pay yourself back. Yeah, so it's like yeah. an internal loop, as it were. Yeah, so once it's set up, it's a great tool to use uh, for multiple things, multiple investments, not just real estate. So there's two ways I like to buy. I buy either discounted real estate, which is I buy anything 70% uh, of the market value or under, and then fix it up, put a tenant in it or Airbnb it or midterm rental, whatever we do with it. Once we have a cash flow on it, we put a lien on it, take all our money out. Sometimes we get more than what we put into it. So you don't really need money to buy real estate in that regard. And the initial uh, down payment or cash purchase can be funded using a hard money lender, such as I think, I mean, I see in your uh, yeah. background, yeah. you're a transactional lender yourself. Yeah, uh, sure. or private money lender. So people can borrow from you, people can borrow from me and buy their first deal and then refinance our money out and then just hold the property and it will cash flow. And that's the beauty about American real estate. Like what, where I come from, properties rent for $250. In America, they rent for 16, 17, 18, I mean, uh, $1,800 a month. So if you buy low, put a lien on it, then you are, after paying the lien, like on the mortgage payment, you're still going to end up with some money. So no lender in America is going to hesitate to give you a loan on it. So there are multiple options. And then the second thing, what I do is I buy subject to deals or seller finance deals with maybe 10 to 20% down payment out of my pocket. I mean, I try to stay below 10%. I will go to up to 10, 20% only in certain special case scenarios where I'm buying it for, uh, I mean, not just a creative reason, but for more reasons such as I'm getting a discount and a creative lead at the same time. So if I have that, then I'll probably go up to 20%. But when I, uh, if I end up renting it, my money stays in the deal, but I have, I have multiple private money lenders who will park their money with me for, uh, anywhere between six to ten percent monthly, uh, so six to ten percent interest rate uh, annualized interest rate. Uh, so, or the third option is we will buy that kind of property and then sell it on a wraparound mortgage. What that means is we sell it to an end buyer who will then put down ten to twenty percent down payment, which will pay me my money back, and then I keep making money bit uh, off of the delta, uh, interest rate delta between the interest rate I'm charging to the end buyer versus uh, the interest rate I am paying uh, to the underlying lien. So sometimes I'm paying three, four percent to the underlying lien when I picked up this property and I'm selling it on a wraparound mortgage that is nine, 10, 11 percent interest rate sometimes. So my delta can be five to seven percent uh, on a property where I have zero money in. So, and those deals are possible. What I want to say is, I mean, I've been at it 10 years and you are, you've been at it 20 years, but people who are just starting out, it's pretty much sounds unbelievable that this is possible. But once you have enough network built, then things start to, uh, I mean, then that snowball effect like picks up. It's not going to happen like, I mean, within two months or three months, you have to be consistent. You have to stick to and your strategies, believe in it and keep doing small things until you start like, uh, I mean, if I gave you, I mean, if I gave some of the deals I recently did to majority of the newbies, they will not even understand what it is that I see in it. I mean, there were, there were multiple deals. I can give you an example. They were on the market sitting for months. Nobody even like tried to uh, bid on it because they just thought it's a waste of their time. But I spent my time. I dug a little deeper because I saw something that people did not. And then when I dug a little deeper, I was able to renegotiate the deal, restructure the deal in my favor. Because by that time, they already understood that nobody wants it. So, I mean, a lot of things, I mean, it's a, it's a, 
mean, you you don't just negotiate because you uh i mean how do i say this like when you negotiate like you get better at it over time because you know the game you know what happens uh when certain deal sits on the market longer how it affects the uh the thought process of a seller they get like they get desperate they are ready to uh they are ready to negotiate at that time if someone just listed their deal yesterday and i i hit them with a lower price today they are not going to work with me right. because they they yeah. are going to wait it out yeah there are thousand ways to buy real estate you don't really need your own money you just have to be consistent in building a network there you go and, i mean more than any, more than anything like play with the cards you are dealt right i mean no someone has money but zero knowledge someone has a lot of knowledge but no money and someone has other skill set and no money or no knowledge people can be successful from i mean there are multiple paths to the top i mean you don't yeah. have to no. yeah, just do what it. i did or you did or jj did Mm. My my biggest challenge was always they uh, seem to make a bunch of mistakes. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, Graham, yeah. Graham, yeah. let's you and I continue to build your network, my friend. Yes, as I say all the time, your network will be the the, the path to your success. I think so. Yeah. yeah, Graham, thank you so much. We got a couple more questions in line for for Chai. Graham. Nice, nice talking to you, Randy. You are on with Chai. What's your question? All right, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Well, yes, hey, how are you, Randy? Uh, I'm doing great. JJ, thank you so much for putting us on. Chai, amazing story. Love hearing it. Um, that whole grassroots thing. And I'm sure it's definitely a challenge transitioning the mindset and all that comes from investing, you know, in India here in the US. Um, obviously you had a you know a, an arc to your journey and and you you you're talking about doing direct mail and cold calling and all that. And just with our wonderful sub two community, obviously you've built your network around, you know, built it up. People are coming to you and that's bringing opportunities to you. And um, as you've done the other outbound marketing, maybe you've gotten to a point now where you don't need to do any of that because you have so much deal flow. Oh, yeah, for to, sure. to you. But if you are, I'm curious if you are doing any outbound marketing, what are you currently doing and what you actually see is bringing uh, deals in? what's, what's working the best. So oh, you guessed it right the very first time. I don't do a lot of outbound marketing anymore because I mean, eighty percent of our business works off of networking, and we have a bunch of different programs for wholesalers who don't have money to put into their own marketing. They can partner up with us. We can provide certain things, and they can pro- put sweat equity. And any deals that come out of it, they just don't. They don't just automatically come to us. but all we get is the first right of refusal so they still get their assignment fee we still have to purchase from <laughs> them just as another wholesaler but because of the relationship and the uh and the convenience that we offer a lot of people work with us exclusively so if i have to say if if i say yes to outbound marketing that's majority of our uh focus like a lot of people that exclusively work with us they have their own business i have my own business but because we provided resources they send us their deals uh, before anybody else so that's yeah. one thing we do uh but we also we do some like small uh experiments with outbound marketing we we pretty much put it on hold entire like 2023 because the market was really not ready for cash offers in my opinion because what happened in 2021 uh led every one of the sellers on the market to believe that their house is worth a million dollars when it's not even worth 300,000 okay yeah because they thought i can just list it on the market for a million dollars and i'll have 10 people bid on it so and that that was happening again i may be putting the really dramatic numbers in everyone's head right now but if the house was 300000 and they listed for 350 it will get sold in 2021 yeah so the whole mindset uh, and my focus is always mindset in the business and that's i think i feel like that is my key to success so when i 
noticed that in 2022, I can make hundreds of uh, cash offers, but nobody's going to expect accept it because the market is here. Their expectation is here. So even if I hit them with 70%, it's still going to come to the market level. I need a discount. I need it below market level. Yeah. If I tell them your house is worth 300 and I need it for 200, they're going to say, no, it's worth 400 and I can give you for 300. Yeah. So there, it was pointless. And a lot of people were struggling for that reason. But entire 2022 and half of 2023 had to pass before this whole like thing uh, in the cell. I mean, the seller's mindset is normalized more. So people yeah. know the 300,000 house is worth 300,000. That's it. Now I can go to them and say, okay, your house needs so much work and I need it for 70%. So we are kicking our marketing, uh, like we are basically ramping it up again uh, this year because I think the market is right for cash offers. Like, I mean, if you I, make the right cash offer, yeah. When you say you're kicking your marketing up, again, getting back to Randy's question, is this you're doing outbound marketing, right? You are now getting yes. So we are starting our outbound marketing, or rather, doing some small experiments, what's working and what's not. But right now, uh, we are. I mean, we do cold calling, uh, and we also do pay per click. But we do more. Uh, I mean, we used to do our own pay per click, but there are a lot of companies on the market that actually provide leads. So which is now there is a new name for it, pay per lead. Okay. I'm using lead Zolo and need to sell your house back, both. Giles, Frederick, you are on with Chai. What's your question? Thanks, uh, Chai and JJ, for putting this together. It's very informative. But the question that I have, uh, it, it's around the first gentleman who asked a question about, I think it was about insurance. I have uh, some IRAs. I just converted to some self-directed IRAs. Have you had any experience with that as far as, because I still find myself right now using my own money. I have not activated that uh, self-directed IRA to invest yet. So uh, have you had any experience? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I, I don't have a whole life insurance a policy or uh, infinite banking, but I do have a self-directed IRA I use for my lending business. Uh, so I have my personal lending business that I, uh, I just use my IRA funds to lend because, I mean, on market, the growth is very unpredictable. And if I do maybe four loans in a year, I make more than the market returns. That's my theory. And the, all the returns from these investments, they go back to the IRA and it's tax-free. Uh, I mean, as long as it's not tax-free, tax deferred. I don't have a Roth IRA. Maybe I should have a Roth IRA one, day, one of these days. But uh, if you have a self-directed traditional IRA, you can use that money for multiple things. If you want to acquire properties from this money, there are certain banks that give you a loan. Uh, and I think the loan to value for those loans is a, a bit lower than a normal market loan. I think you have to put down like 35% or something to buy a property within your IRA using these banks that fund uh, to the IRA. I think there is one bank, if I'm, I mean, don't like, don't um, quote me on this, but I would say, there is a bank called Northwestern Bank or something. I may be wrong, but uh, look it up. I think they they do loans for self-directed IRA. Are you with Quest? No, I'm with Equity Equity Trust. I just converted a couple uh, hundred Similar. cases into it, so I have yeah. not actually activated it yet. But I yeah. I find myself using my personal funds right now to do certain things. Yeah. So that was one of my questions. What was your experience with that? So that's 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 fine. And by second, yeah, actually, yeah. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I use the company called Quest IRA, and Quest IRA has all their forms online. So I just have to fill it out, and they have this Adobe sign to even sign the forms online. So when I, when I send them a request to disburse the funds, they ask me what it is for, and I just have to provide details, and my investment is funded. In within 20 okay, hours. typically, so if you have a hot smoking deal, what's typically the turnaround time that you find works for you? Uh, if you have a week, no. does it work within a week or, or less for you? So what I told you about these banks to acquire property is if you're not buying them cash. But if you're funding the entire deal 
cash from your IRA, then you don't need to worry about any bank. You can just send a uh, request to your IRA using one of their forms online. It goes through their approval process. Basically, it's your money. It's not their money. Mm -hmm. But there, I mean, there is there are some restrictions on how they can disburse the funds. So they need to make sure they are in your investment is in compliance with what they're trying to achieve. Try. Okay. So once, yeah. Let me jump. What's the turnaround time on something like that? I think I think that's part of Giles' question. 24 to 48 hours with okay. Quest IRA. So you just submit a request and they will fund it within 24 hours. So when you're buying a deal, if it's a cash deal you're purchasing from a wholesaler, you just have to tell the wholesaler that I have a private money lender and I need 48 hours notice before funding. And most of the times, if the deal is like they just opened escrow with any title company, it's going to take five to seven days before they have commitment. So 48 hours is no big deal. Okay, thank you. Joel, you're on with Chai. What's your question? All right. Thanks to uh, be on here with you, JJ. Thanks for taking your time. It's all with Chai. Uh, so my question today is... Um, now I'm coming more up with more ideas of uh, being like a connector. So like been in this community for almost two years. So now I'm trying to actually get some deals done. So what I ha learned was lately was I was making a lot more connections and a lot more friendships in this group. And that's kind of what I'm enjoying more. But I want to like start utilizing it and making more uh, connections and money out of that as well. Like, like raising capital and... Uh, bringing probably deals to other people as well so my question is like uh how what's the best way as a connector to like like bring proper proper lenders to other sub two students for example like without like verifying them without like creating like any complications so very good question i would say uh, and just if if I may repeat it, I think Joel's trying to ask a question where I mean he is himself is a connector within sub two and he's trying yeah. to bring deals to the buyers uh, and basically connect wholesalers to other buyers such as myself. But now when I mean when he knows I'm a buyer, I may not have my own money to fund the deal. So he's also connecting me with a lender. So within the sub two okay. community or any community for that matter, there is usually people who source the deal. There are people who fund the deal and there are people who actually buy and run the deal. So those are the three major roles uh, within the part of the transaction. But where people like Joel or Munif Saza or a lot of people who are well marketed within sub two and well uh organized with their connections also play a part of a connector okay so even if they're not part of the the transaction because they are the ones who connected the wholesaler to the buyer and the private money lender to the buyer they get paid as part of the transaction and it is very like back in the day there was no official recognition for these roles and i mean thank you to pace for giving this recognition to people who do go out of their way, work hard to do these things. Connector is a legitimate thing. Not everybody has the skill that connector has. So what JJ, Joel's trying to ask is, how can he bring a private money lender and connect with the buyer safely so that he doesn't burn his uh, relationship with the private money lender because the buyer turned out to be a fraud or he doesn't burn his relationship with the buyer or the wholesaler because private money lender did not deliver on time. So that is the question. Am I right, Joel? Yep. Okay, so the answer to that mm -hmm. is not very straightforward to be honest with you, but mm -hmm. private money lender is in the business of lending money. Okay, if I'm the lender and I am a lender on a lot of deals, I do my own due diligence. I don't rely on Joel to do the due diligence. If he brings me a deal by doing the due diligence, great. I mean, he gets a lot of brownie points for that. Uh, and I will work with him more and more. But that is not his job to do. His job is to bring me a deal. He, of course, he has 
some responsibility to bring me a qualified deal because he wants to maintain his reputation and build more uh, i mean do more business with me but he doesn't have to so if the deal goes wrong it's not the connector's fault why the deal goes went wrong if the buyer did not deliver it's not because joel brought me as a lender a wrong deal or the wrong buyer so everybody is a big boy here everybody went to school everybody did their now this is game time right like you you are in the real world shit goes i mean shit happens all the time i mean i'm actually in the middle of the biggest like crazy craziest shit storm that has happened within certain communities i'm part of uh, that we are uh figuring out or we are uh helping the buyers but to answer your question it is not your responsibility it is uh, to make sure everybody is doing their part i mean you are not the investigator but you have to ask the right question before yes. you bring the deal to someone uh, that actually tells uh, talks a lot about your credibility if you are serious about building a business in any community no matter whether it's a real estate or uh any other business for that matter if you bring any opportunity to any individual for anything you always have to do some sort of due diligence to make sure that you are not like wasting people's time so that's all that is like the the, the deal is legitimate it's underwritten correctly the numbers are correct the buyer is legit the buyer has money you have some credibility established from their from the past experience with the buyer and same goes for the lender once you provide all the information to all the parties you have done your job that's all that matters as a connector you have to like sell the credibility of each party to all the other parties and that's that's pretty much what you do because they didn't know each other before you brought them together or they were not seeking each other before you brought them together so your job was to connect them that's all that is and then make sure you tell each person hey i have worked with this guy i know this guy i have worked with this lender he's funded two deals before and that's about it i mean they are big boys they have to do their own due diligence of the business they are in they are not going to rely on you and blame you for something if, if things go wrong hope that answers the question again it's not a straight forward answer but i mean in business people like a lot of people blame each other all the time and i think that's wrong i think like if you got into something it's your responsibility to do your own due diligence i mean you got into it for monetary benefit business is about as i mean any business is about just as much like loss as much as it is about profit so the loss happens i have had it i've like i've lost 40 grand to a contractor i relied on one of my closest friends to manage that contractor but i'm not blaming him i'm blaming myself for not putting the right system in place i lost 30 grand on a house that i bought in an area that i was not familiar with it was like a ghetto i thought i'm ready for it and i wasn't so there is nobody else to blame but yourself when things go wrong that's it your question was about bringing people together part of that as chai said is the due diligence and having some understanding of the deal another one i think is is the other part of that is creating the relationships making yourself visible so that you can have people know to come to you and how to do some preliminary screening before you even get to that part you know what what are the things i always talk about is chase the relationship don't chase the deal you need to have the the right relationships in place Yeah. That you could bring those deals to fruition. Cynthia, you are on with Chai. What's your question? I want to first say thank you JJ for the platform and Chao, thank you for your wealth of knowledge. Thank you. Um, thank I've you, enjoyed I'm, I'm telling you what I've enjoyed the most. It's when you start talking. Okay, I started off here, started off the more you talk, woof, the wealth of knowledge and your comfort level with it just kind of like went to the ceiling. I was like, look at that. You're just so comfortable with 
what I'm doing now as a connector, as a mover, as a as a lender, as a as a buyer. I I, I mean, it was just I, I I didn't get the number of years. 2019 was your about, first time about ten, month. like eight eight to ten years, I would say. He's only okay. 24 years so, old. I mean, I have. Yeah. So he, he is, I'm not yeah. like I'm not a good. I mean, well, I can talk, but I'm not. I mean, there are a lot of better speakers are in sub two, such as like Munif Saza, Noah, or DQ, or oh, no. even JJ oh. for that matter. Oh, but just... I just talk my experience. I just talk yeah. about what I've done because yeah. I've gone through it. That's all. That's all I'm talking about. Is 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 that 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 sensation of comfort. To what I what my experience is, I'm comfortable with it. It is. It was very apparent. Sorry. It was nice. But thank you. But my question is, I got two really. But your market is. I heard that you in Texas, Houston, Houston Texas yeah. only. That's all you. You're a buyer only in Houston. We are all over Texas. We have teams in Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, and Houston. All, all okay. entire Texas. Okay, so that answered my other question. But let me ask you a question on how would you approach this? I had someone yesterday evening send me a property in in, in Missouri. Okay, it's a 12 unit. And they got it they got it really it's about a page long write up, you know, the person Yeah. The person start rehabbing it and it, it must be virtual Virtually, he's rehabbing it, and so he right. it's fifty percent rehab. It's a heavy rehab, I, I guess. They replaced the electrical and the plumbing, and they was, it sounds like they was getting ready to start in the kitchen. And um, he stopped, and the, the guy who reached out to me stated that um, he he doesn't have uh, uh, he's having general contracting issue. He doesn't have a general contractor to help him finish. Now I, I haven't asked, a, I, I know two general contractors, they're upright individuals. Um, but I could probably help him with the general contractors if he really wanted to finish. How would you go about to, uh, this is a 12 unit. Okay. Um, I, it's not in the best neighborhood. So one of my general contractors does security. So he knows how to go in there and secure that property okay. to make sure he can finish the property, you know? All right. So how would you, how would you, would you, would you let it go or, or would you, you know, step in there and try to help them? Oh, if you can help them with uh, the least possible exposure to yourself. So if you know, so I have a very similar situation happening as we speak. We have a, about, I mean, 40 unit apartment complex, 40 to 50 unit apartment complex, 24 units are, I mean, the building is there and the other building actually completely dilapidated. There is only foundation there. So we started building these, uh, rebuilding the 24 units and, uh, the area is very like sketchy and like not not so not very good mm -hmm. and a lot of i mean we have had multiple break-ins as mm -hmm. we move through our uh, but my partners i mean i myself would never take that deal because my crew i mean my we are not really set up for handling uh properties in such neighborhoods we are set up for operating in nicer suburbs with light rehab. That's all I do. And there is plenty out there uh, that, I mean, more than I can uh, chew. So I only go after that. But this one came to me through another person who thought I will be a better partner to them because of my understanding of the Section 8 housing. Because large part of my business is Section 8 housing. And in in these uh, lower income neighborhoods, Section 8 housing does really well. But again, I don't go on buying in these neighborhoods. I buy in nicer neighborhoods and then put Section 8 tenants there. But these like partners of mine, they came to me to leverage my knowledge. So that's how I got into this deal. 
so if you have a special specific not but they did not ask for any uh i mean skin in the game from me uh initially so i was okay with it like if because even i didn't know their capabilities of how much they can handle uh in that neighborhood but now that i've seen it next deal i don't mind putting skin in the game because i've learned their skill set so mm-hmm. if you already know the skill set of this person who manages like security in neighborhoods like that maybe you can even put a skin in the game but take the responsibility for something that you are good at like leverage your skill set and then learn the new skill set you are not going to go and directly i mean don't take the responsibility to secure the property because you are not Mm-mm. like set up for that maybe you are set up to bring lender or maybe you are set up to bring contractors maybe you are set up to do something else that you can bring to the partnership i mean are you what did you say the current seller or the investor wants to bring in partners to manage this locally well is that the, what you said the gentleman who 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 reached out to me told me he has a cash buyer who needs a general contractor team and i told oh, him okay, that see, yeah. the general contract i do know a general contractor that has a background in security that does gen- he he he's okay. not worried about the neighborhood he when he when, right. where he walks he 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 leaves a track don't come over here mess up with our stuff he leaves he leaves he has human dogs and 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 uh regular dogs on the property all right so <laughs> i mean you you may not like my answer what i'm about to say but in this situation particularly you are not bringing a skill set to the partnership or rather you are bringing the skill set but the skill set you are bringing is not the, the contracting connection. or the security you are the connector exactly yeah. so that is also a great skill set by the way there is not nothing wrong in becoming a great mm-hmm. connector so if you are that but then again if you go in and tell that other buyer that you are responsible for contracting and security no. that's not how it's going to work you no. need to be upfront and tell them hey i am my partner is responsible for this and make sure your contractor partner is ready to take such responsibility yeah. is set up to take such responsibility because this is your your credibility on the line just like we i mean what we discussed with joel joel i think this is a great example of what joel was asking earlier so bring in like bring in your contractor partner be be upfront and set the expectations right like if you managing expectations is all that is in the business like make sure you keep the ex- uh uh how do you say it like uh, i mean you i'm just a connector i'll be just be a connector and, yeah yeah no management right. i'm not going to be in the in in the development of that rehab project at all um i'm just yeah i'm just going to ask my general contractor I mean, does he have time and he have interest in that particular area and if he says yes i'll connect him yeah i mean basically don't commit a lot of things like under commit and over deliver like be part of the deal from your contractor side become like if you want to eventually start taking the responsibility of becoming a contractor maybe this is your opportunity to learn on the job oh my, oh or my, just oh become my, oh a connector my, yeah only on my yeah. own deals the uh, uh i got but, i got to want to do the deal and i i don't think i want to challenge I, i'll tell you i'll tell you one thing that once you if this if you are able to put this deal together make sure you see it through like make sure you see it through not because you want to learn to become a contractor or become a person who provides security but more to learn who this buyer is and who this contractor is what their personality traits are and can you count on them for future deals chai brother gold nuggets go go gold nuggets man um <clears throat> we're going to wrap up uh, thank you we've kind of a little bit longer than i wanted to go but as i usually say if i've got a guest speaker dropping gold nuggets i'm reluctant to stop them uh, so thank you so thank much you, man. i appreciate it hey, i got two more questions for you before we wrap up um yeah. if people want to follow up with you do you have a website do you do coaching 
Would it be Instagram? Would it be Facebook? So I don't do coaching. Um, like paid. I haven't like people ask me all the time this question. I don't do paid coaching yet. Maybe, but people can connect with me with any questions they have. Uh, currently, I'm in the stage where we are ramping up our operations and training a lot of new people. So once I pass that, then I'm gonna uh, think about maybe adding coaching to my portfolio. Fantastic. Um, my last question for you, and you, you, you've touched on this throughout your call, but you know my group's about networking. I'm not coaching transactions. I'm not coaching private lending or anything like that. Uh, but just helping people build relationships, whether it's Seb2 or Astro or any of the number of education groups out there, there are new or new investors coming in every day. Some of them are experienced, some of them are inexperienced. But whether they are experienced or in, or inexperienced investors coming to the platform of social media to now build their business, what is the importance of networking? to the success of someone's business and what is the importance of maybe joining a networking group like mine to the success of someone's business? I mean, great, great question. And I, I love to answer this question every time. Any, I mean, I'm on a podcast or an in, in an interview. So I'm going to answer this question by telling you one fun fact before I give you the final answer. I go to these like networking events a lot and I was like trying to be funny when I said this in one of my last things that every time I go to a networking event, I make like 50 to hundred grand and I don't see that money. Like, I mean, I don't come home and I have money in the bank, but the knowledge, some of the things that you learn from these events, like this event that JJ put together, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I might have like completely bombed in this interview, but still, the inspiration that you guys will carry because something JJ said, or maybe something Joel uh, said, or a question that someone raised that like had this, like, uh, I mean, that the light bulb went, uh, I mean, turned on in your brain. So anything, it might be anything, but I have time and again seen this happen in my business that I go to a networking event because I have some problem in my business and I'm, I'm attending an event where more investors who focus on the same thing that I do come together to discuss and I have an opportunity to ask my question and I go home with an answer and instead of making 15 grand, now I can make 100 grand on the deal. Like that happens all the time. So when I have a, like when I, if I have to put priority of things, Maybe top 10 things, I will just put networking there, okay? <laughs> and then 11th thing is something else. So it is so important. I cannot emphasize this enough. I mean, I have like, I mean, networking is how I have been successful. That's it, period. There is nothing else like more than, more important than networking in my life. I mean, I take every opportunity to put myself out there, such as this opportunity uh, included, basically. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, what JJ is doing, JJ's like group, these groups are more important than anything, any other group, because this is being like, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, JJ, but you're running this out of pure passion, right? Because yeah. even running a networking group is not easy. Like a lot of people are trying and failing. I see that every day. JJ has been consistent for how many years? I mean, Five. are you doing this? Five years, five wow, years for the yeah. group. Uh, we're going into our fourth year of Zoom calls. So, I mean, I sometimes, like, I'm scared of, like, starting my own group because I don't know if I can deliver the same amount of value consistently like JJ does. So I don't know how big or small this group is. If it's a small but focused group, I think that's better than a large, like, group where you don't know how to connect with people. And uh, someone who is running it five years consistently, I mean, they, they have proven their model. And I mean, like they say in any business, like if you, I think in first year, 80% businesses fail. And by fifth year, 90% businesses fail or 90% initiatives fail for that matter. So if you are at it five years, I think you are doing a great job. I mean, kudos to you.
So, I mean, this is great value. You're bringing a lot of people, a lot of space students. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, JJ. Yeah, thank you so, so much. I, yeah. No. In my opinion, I mean, networking is the highest priority of anything in any business. Yeah, no, I, I thank you for your answer. I, I, I thank you for your acknowledgement. Um, our group, actually, uh, we're just about the top 4,000 people for the networking group. Wow. Yeah, we've got 3,000 followers on our YouTube channel. Um, Amazing. You know, we talk about all the time the 80-20 rule. You know, 20% of the people do 80% of the work. If I look at yeah. 10% of 4,000, that's 400. So if I take 20%, 800. If I have 800 people, you know, in the group, and, and we we have that number of people that are that are i think doing very very yeah. well you know um in our you know of the of the 225 guest speakers that we've had for the zoom calls that are recorded we have many that are, weren't recorded but of the 225 that are recorded 100 of those are sub two rock stars wow so and that's amazing you know we we talk frequently about our success was predicated on the five people we interact with the most to develop our relationships with the most. Well, for those 500 people, for, for those five people, for me, I look to the 100 sub two rock stars that have been guest speakers, the moon Neve, the mom, do Diallo, the Daryl Ellison, the, the, um, Noah Hoffman, the Prakash Dumbre, uh, the Jason Lombardi's, uh, you know, just, you know, for me, what I, and I say it all the time for those of you, you guys that are on the call right now, or if you're listening on YouTube, I build my business by building relationships and I build relationships by leading with value. And what I want is the most valuable thing you have. I want the most valuable thing you have. And people say time. No, it's not time. Prakash is so busy. Uh, Chai is so busy. Jason Lombardi, no, these guys are so busy. I, I, I can't get their time. But what I want is what I like to think I have is their friendship. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, because if one, if if, if I'm not their friend, are they going to help me? No. If they're not my, if, if you guys are watching on YouTube, you're on the car right now, you're new investors. If you're not my friend, am I going to help you? No, no. You know, what's important is to not chase the deal, but chase the relationship. And that is oh, going to yeah. be the, the, the absolute key to your success. So, Chai, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Um, your call you, should be on my YouTube channel within the week, I'm hoping, depending upon the backload of my editor. Uh, stick around, you guys, because we're going to go to breakout rooms in a minute. Um, if you want to connect with myself or Chai, follow him on Facebook, follow him on Instagram. Um, and that's how you connect with him. If you want to connect with me, go to my website, jjzzin.com. Click the register now button, join my group, connect with me. You'll get my phone number. Uh, reach out and let's become friends first. And through that, great things happen. Chai, thank you so much. And we'll see everybody out on uh, social media, right? Yes, sir. See you guys soon. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank for... you so much, everybody. Thank you, everyone.